At the tournament is called Kick HIV na Kivale Refugee Settlement Soccer Tournament. The reason why we came up with the, the, the name itself, uh, we wanted to first the refugees themselves to own the tournament. That's why we had to put in the Nakivare Refugee Settlement name. And we wanted to bring out the, the area of HIV uh, prevention. And our goal is to have this tournament twice every year at the beginning of the year and towards the end of the year. I've been involved in a few different projects. Um, I came here as a nurse, so I was going to do some work in a few clinics. Um, I visited two clinics, one in Sitabale village and one on Kimi Island. Um, I'm also helping out with the soccer tournament, um, Kick HIV um, with Tasaga and there's another project I'll be working on um, developing a youth centre in one of the villages. It is an amazing tournament. This is our second tournament and uh, I think it is amazing, it is marvellous. Uh, well, the tournament has been really good. It has attracted the, most of the community uh, to come and uh, watch and support. So far, uh, I think uh, really it's uh, it's really fine. You know, as an organization, we are always looking out for opportunities to serve the communities. The whole idea of uh, us coming to Nakivari Refugee Settlement came from uh, the news we were reading. Because as an organization, you have to always keep yourself informed about what is happening everywhere. So it was in 2012 when uh, we read about this this Nak Valley refugee settlement. After realizing that so many young people who ran from their different countries because of the wars, for example, when you look at in this settlement, you see they are the Congolese, the Rwandese, the Eritreans, the Ethiopians, the Somalis, the Burundians, they are all here. But we looked at how can we actually work with them to prevent HIV AIDS amongst themselves. So we saw so many of them were interested in soccer. So we said, now, let us capitalize on this area. We sat down and designed this program, this project. When I came over here, I saw amazing people. I never thought I would come to Nachiba Refugee Camp and I find talented young soccer players, both at the age of 10, at the age of 14, at the age of 18 and the age of 20 and, and, and above. So talent in, in Nachiba Refugee Camp, it's amazing. Uh, organizing a tournament is very, very, very uh, challenging and it's not a, a simple one. Because uh, first of all, there is a mobilizing the teams themselves. There is a um, mobilizing the coaches to, uh, to interest them be part of the organizing committee. There is, there is a lot of work involved. Then we also had to look at who are the leaders in the refugee settlement. Of course, the office of the prime minister is very, very, very uh, important in this settlement because they are the leaders, they are the one managing the settlement together with the UN, United Nations Refugee Agency. So, we had to make sure that we also meet with them. In this particular, we've been working with the Office of the Assistant Commandant. This tournament has its own objectives or goals, and they are simple, but not easy to achieve. One of them is to bring about unity of all the refugees in this settlement because like as I said from the start that there are different nationalities in this settlement. I have learned that that we should love each other and we should protect ourselves. The second one is to use football to reach to the refugees with HIV AIDS information. 
that we achieve them when they come together and we communicate to them. And they can be able to make informed decisions either to go for HIV testing to know their uh, serial status or to start using uh, pre preventive measures as condom to prevent themselves from getting HIV. We have been giving them free condoms. Uh, MTI Health Center uh, is giving them free testing. Uh, for the first day, yesterday we tested around 100 pe people, which was so good. And uh, today, I'm seeing the turn up is not poor. So we are so pleased to have this tournament around. People have been testing. So far, we have like more than 300 people who have tested in, 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 in three days. It is an amazing turn up. Even in Kampala, people don't turn up for HIV testing. I have a foundation for HIV tests. I have a foundation for the people who are using the same Labda najua nimeiga kupima ukimwi na kuweza kujua afya yangu na kuendeleza vipaji vya wachezaji mbalimbali. The other one is to develop the talent. Because we know that yes some of these young people they must have dropped they might have dropped out of schools because of the wars. And when they got here maybe some of them can no longer go back to school. But they have talents. So these talents they can be useful to them and their families as they grow into adulthood. So we are using this project to develop the talent of football within the refugee settlement. Wazianto tuangu ya balo, mungu kini saidi ana tu kaa pa juu apa piko maisha mabaya, na tu esiza atu esiza tu tu fike mbari, tu na shifasi papa ya kwanz, mungu kini saidi ana kifika ngambo za maula ya, ni chesa tangu timu ya Chelsea warata ya Barcelona. We are seeing that the tournament is also helping them to have relief on the tremor, the tremor from not being home, I mean their home countries, the psychosocial challenges of missing their relatives back in the country they came from. But soccer brings all these people together, they cheer their teams, they laugh, they smile, they, 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 they shout at their players, do is please continue when they win they, they are all jubilating kwani natusaidia sana sisi kama refugees kukutanana pamoja kutosha stress mumwili na kuendesha skills zetu pamoja some of the challenges we have challenges we have uh, faced during this tournament major one is the language barrier of course there are so many languages used here the somalis have their own language the eritreans their own language so we have tried to at least to find a way of solving the language barrier by getting translators, but still it goes back to the, fina the financial resources. They are, they are committed guys, but you see him actually committed, but then you feel sorry that you've not even fed him the whole day. That's been a challenge. Uh, the soccer players, every interval, you see that they have really worked so hard, they need some refreshment, and we don't have money to give them the refreshment. We know they need it, but we can't provide it because we don't have the money for it. We don't have money for water for it. Yeah. We know they need lunch. Some of them, like they come from very distant zones. So they, they have to come here in the morning and leave. If they have the game in the evening, they leave in the evening. But they have to be fed. They want money, they want food, and it's very hard not to be able to help them with their problems. When I'm here, everybody's asking me for balls. I will, I, coachy, coachy, give me ball. Coachy, coachy, bolly, bolly. Coachy, me, I, I want a pair of boots. You know, coachy, I, I need a uniform. Because you want to eat a medal, you want to have a medal. We don't have balls, we don't have 
shoes. We don't have some clothes to put on. In terms of like uh, um, refreshment, those small, small stuff, see, the organizer has did not plan for them, but uh, he promised me that the next time it will be fine. There are many other things like when, when, like when you're playing, you have to mark the pitch. So in other places, they use expensive uh, paint. But when we, we came here, we didn't have enough money to buy the paint, to paint the, the, the soccer pitch. So we sat down with them and said, dear friends, we want the, match to, the games to go on, but how can we match the soccer pitch to know this is the, soccer, the, the, the goalkeeper's box, to know this is the center, to know this is the boundary of the soccer pitch. So they said, you know what? Let us use ash because we cook food here. So we have ash, it's free. So let's just use ash. Every day we'll be just putting, in, putting ash back again. We have a few uh, referees. They are, they, they, the, the referees should be more because if referees go for two, two games or two, three games, he's always tired. But we don't have to do it, we have but in the Vizuri, my mother is in Guinea, Zuko in a panda, you can be Lima, a plane of a plate, you call Vizuri Sana, but Navatungese, Pesa Kutur, not to watch the Pesa Kidogo San, it's a secret. So, all in all, when you look at uh, all these challenges that we are facing, uh, you find that now, how do these people actually survive to continue working in this tournament? The only big, big uh, supporting area is the commitment because among our staff members among the refugee uh, people who have actually accepted to work with us they have the commitment to make this a success even with the limited resources that we do have we need more help from fundraising um, to put more money into the programs because it really comes down as much as I hate to say it, but to the funding for the programs. But with Tasaga, what I've seen is all the money that goes into Tasaga, I've seen it myself go directly to the projects. We would love always to have this tournament at least twice a year, because as you know, soccer is the, like, the face of other games all over the world. And it is the only game which can bring everybody out, whether it's women or kids at the pitch. And each second these people come here at the pitch, you know, they learn from each other, they unite each other, they smile to each other, you know, different nations coming together supporting one team or the other team. So what we really, I would really love to say that I would love to see this tournament happen twice a year with a really a good total budget of the tournament. Actually, we are using this settlement, refugee settlement, as a pilot, as a laboratory to learn how best we can work with the refugees to prevent HIV AIDS amongst themselves, to develop uh, their talents and to bring about unity. So therefore, we are not planning to end here in Nakiva refugee settlement. We are looking at, after getting the lessons here, learning the experiences here, we are planning to go out to other camps, make outreaches to other camps, have similar activities. But still, that will need us to do more mobilization for resources. We are committed to doing that we we'll try our best because we are calling ourselves Tasaga. Tasaga in Luganda it means he doesn't joke. So whatever we are doing, we are not joking. We are committed to doing it and we are committed to achieving it. Those that can volunteer, definitely contact Tasaga and come across and visit, even if it's for a short time to get a taste of what life is like over here. If you like it, you can stay or you can come back. Um, coming here in person 
It's motivating to go home and do fundraising to support the programs that Bruhan and Tasaga are running and their funding. I'm aware that outside there, outside this settlement, or even within this settlement, there might be people, organizations, individuals, companies that would like to support this tournament. Please, you are very, very much welcome. Feel free to contact us. You can visit us on our website. We have our contacts there. You go to Tasaga website, www.tasaga.org, or you can send us an email, info at tasaga.org. Ask us about the budget for the tournament, how you would like to get involved in the tournament. We'll be very much welcome to working with you, accepting your support. We can avail you the whole information about the tournament, or whatever is required, so that you can see the area you can get involved in, in terms of supporting it.